I'm somebody who relapsed many times, and this is something that a lot of addicts trying to get clean actually go through. And when I was trying to get clean, I just, I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand why did I keep relapsing and for loved ones of people with addictions it's even more confusing right they go off to rehab you think that they just get fixed up come back so that relapse after treatment is so weird and confusing and sometimes we get angry and upset well in this video we're going to be talking about Chris Offling going back to treatment but we're going to see what we can learn about this What's up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and addiction recovery and what I try to do usually to try to teach different lessons to see what we can learn from is I'll take different topics going on in the YouTube community because, I don't know, for me that's an easy way to kind of grasp these subjects. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and if you're not yet, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. All right, so yeah, Chris Offling. I think that's how you say his name. If I'm saying it wrong, feel free to correct me down in the comments below. But anyways, um, he he's somebody who I had no clue about, but he was brought to my attention uh, a few months ago, um, or maybe two months ago, uh, whenever he posted this video. It's, uh, it's called, I'm a heroin addict, the truth about everything. So I had some people send me that video and see if I would do a video about it. And I didn't end up making a video on it, but basically in it, Chris discusses his heroin addiction. He talks about how he went to treatment, talks about, you know, that's why he's been, you know, away for a while and he's trying to focus on himself. He's trying to focus on his recovery and everything like that. It was a great video and I'll link it down in the description if you wanna check it out, right? So anyways, whenever I see somebody, um, you know, get clean, like, because my drug of choice was prescription opioids. So although I didn't progress to heroin, it's the same stuff, just in a different package. <laughs> All right, but whenever I see somebody getting clean, especially like on YouTube, I follow their progress. Like some of you have seen the videos I've done kind of uh, looking at Taylor Nicole Dean's addiction recovery. And by the way, she just tweeted out today that today she celebrated six months clean. So that's awesome. And yeah, I made a video yesterday that you could check out about her trying to get off Suboxone. All right, well anyways, um, I, I started following Chris on YouTube as well as on Twitter. And I saw today that he popped up with this image. And it said, the hospital has a no phones or internet rule, so I bought an Apple Watch to sneak in so I could write you guys. But if I don't tweet or respond to your text, you know why. So at this point, I didn't realize he went back to rehab. Like I saw that, and those of you who don't know me, by the way, um, not only did I get clean seven years ago, but I worked in a very, very large addiction treatment center for a few years, and I ran groups, I met with clients. Um, I've literally worked with thousands of drug addicts and alcoholics, all right? So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, did he go back to treatment? Well, the tweet right before that, um, or a couple tweets before that, he talks about how he was going to a detox facility. And that's awesome. Like, first, I wanna give Chris praise, and anybody out there, like, check it out. Like, never give up. Like, never give up. Like I said, like, I have seven years clean, and I was a chronic relapser. I have met so many people. Like, one of the reasons I didn't give up is because I met so many people who relapsed multiple times, and then something clicked and they managed to stay clean. Like I have met people who relapsed like 10, 15 times and now they've been clean for years. So never give up. So whenever I see somebody like Chris going back to treatment, I'm like, that's awesome. That is freaking awesome. But like I said in the intro, we get confused. We get confused as to why we relapse. And when I saw this, when I saw him saying that they don't allow phones, so he snuck in an Apple Watch, I'm like, bruh, right? Because my videos are for all of you, all right? So so one thing is, and I, I, don't, I don't blame Chris too much for it, he's somebody trying to get sober and stay sober, but when you have this kind of massive influence, like he's like, hey everybody, if you go to rehab, sneak in an Apple Watch, that's the way to do it, right? So I'm not a huge fan of that, but I'll give him a pass on that. But my videos are for you, whether you're trying to get clean, whether you're in recovery, whether you have a loved one, all right? So like, here's the thing, 
like when I first got sober, like every, every time I got sober, every time I got sober, I kept doing things my way, right? I kept doing things the way I wanted to do them and I kept relapsing. So finally, seven years ago, seven years ago when I f was when I finally just threw my hands up in the air, I'm like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I can't stay clean. In fact, Chris's next tweet after that I, uh, Apple Watch one says, every day I say I'm going to stay clean and it's all I could focus on. I need to give myself credit for getting off anxiety meds and away from bad friends. Absolutely, by the way. But the painkillers, I can't do it alone for some reason wish me luck, all right? So I couldn't understand why I kept relapsing, but it was because of stuff like this. People would tell me what to do, and I'm like, I know a lot better than you, right? So I got clean. I didn't actually um, have health insurance or any money or anything like that to go into treatment. So um, I was very fortunate that my mom put me in a sober living and she paid for my sober living. Mine, it was about $500 a month. But in that sober living, and I was a 27 year old grown ass man, they had all sorts of rules, all sorts of rules. If any of you have ever been to sober living, typically, like you'll, you could probably relate to this, Usually there's a, a blackout period where you're not allowed to have your phone or you know, whatever it is. And that's for a variety of reasons. Like they don't want you texting your dealers and everything. Cause when you first get clean, you're still just a wily crazy person, especially if you're withdrawing, like you wanna, you wanna score, right? But anyways, they also want you to focus on yourself. So like, for example, the treatment center I worked at, there was a, a, a seven day blackout period where like when they first came into inpatient treatment, we locked their phones uh, in a safe, but after a week they were able to make phone calls back home and things like that. But anyways, there's all these rules and I didn't want to abide by them. I did not want to abide by these rules, right? But like I said, I had this gift of desperation and something in my head clicked, it's like, Chris, when you do what you wanna do, you end up relapsing, all right? So when I see this, when I see this young man who had the courage to go back into treatment and he's like, haha, I snuck this in. I'm like, no, dude. Like, this is something that I watched happen so many times. And let's talk about this. So real quick, I just finished this amazing book by an author by the name of Dan Ariely. Like if you're into human behavior, check out all the Dan Ariely books, right? But I've just finished this book. It's called The Honest Truth About Dishonesty. Plenty of studies in there. Like this dude, he just does a billion studies. And it helps me kind of understand like, this is such a great book. I, I think it should be mandatory re reading for anybody newly sober, right? It explains how your lies and dishonesty can snowball, right? So when I was working in the treatment center, we had um, a no cell phones policy. So once they went from inpatient to outpatient, they would get their cell phones back. But the rule was you couldn't have it during sessions, right? During groups, during individual sessions, all that stuff, you could not have your cell phones. So every morning, like I would do morning groups there and I would go in there and do a group and then this tech would come in and he'd have this like little like safe suitcase type deal. And okay, just picture this. We had like 60 to 70 people, right? In the group and he'd be like, okay, everybody put your cell phones in. And there were so many times, so many times that you get like less than 10 cell phones in there, right? And I would just laugh, I'd laugh. I'd be like, okay, all right, it's, you know, it, it, it's just, nobody has a cell phone. None of you guys have cell phones. Okay, you know, whatever. But here's the thing, and I tell people straight up, like, I do not care. I do not care. Like, if, if this dude, Chris, if he was in my treatment facility, I'd be like, I don't care, dude. I don't care. And here's why. When I was getting sober, and my sponsor started giving me, giving me directions and things like that or whatever, I'm the type of person where I wanna cut corners. I wanna do it my way. Oh, you want me to do all this? No, I don't wanna do that, right? And then I just sat there and I thought about it. I'm like, okay, if my sponsor tells me to do this and I don't do it, who's that hurting, right? Because in our mind, we like to think like, <laughs> I'm getting away with this, right? But my sponsor is sober as hell. He has an amazing life. And then I'm sitting here in a sober living house with no friends, no family, no money. I have an oxygen tank. And I'm thinking about how I can cut corners. I realize that if I don't do what I'm told, the only person I'm hurting is myself. So when I was working in treatment and I saw people like thinking they were being all sneaky, hiding their phones and not turning them in, like I'd remind them of that. I'm like, listen, like this doesn't hurt me. Like I'm cool. Like after every day after I did groups and put in my hours, 
I got to go home. I got to go home and I celebrated one more day clean, right? So whether or not they had their cell phone on them made no difference to me. And I'd remind them of that, right? Because why do we go to treatment? Why do we ask for help? Why do we reach out for help, right? I'll tell you, because our life sucks, all right? Chances are Chris is in the same position where he's having issues with friends, family members, all this stuff. Some of you might be able to relate to this, right? So why do you go to treatment? To try to get some of that stuff back. So we gotta check our priorities, man. Like what's more important? Like trying to figure out a way to save our own lives or talking with people on you know, Twitter or on social media, right? I saw people lose their minds. I need to be able to call this person. I need to be able to call that person, all these other things. I'm like, no, 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 no. You need to focus on your recovery. Like we need to get our priorities straight. Like think about it. If you can't go like a week, two weeks, whatever it is, or just even a few hours without your phone, without your technology, like how the hell do you plan on staying clean in this crazy world where we're surrounded by triggers on a regular basis? But the last thing I wanna talk about too is something, uh, one of the studies in there about the, uh, from the honest truth about dishonesty is this snowball effect. Right? So like, I'm the type of addict, and you might be able to relate to this, I'm the type of addict where if you give me an inch, I'll take a mile, right? It's still something that I work on today in, with other vices in my life, right? Like, I'm, for example, like, I'll be dieting, right? And they'll be like, oh, I'll just have this one piece of chocolate. And the next thing you know, I'm just like, ah, oh, whatever. I screwed it up, I'll just keep doing this, right? It's the same thing when we lie, right? So like, these little things, like when these clients would keep their cell phones in their pockets and stuff, I would tell them that chain of events. What happens is like, ooh, I got away with putting this cell phone in my pocket, nobody knows, I'm such a badass, right? And then it turns into, ooh, you know what? I bet I can skip this group and not do this. I bet I can get away with that, right? I'm so badass and they can't catch me, you know? And then that ego starts building up again. And then next thing you know, we're talking about how we could sneak drugs in there or we could probably use, like, it was no coincidence that the same people who were breaking these small rules were the same people who thought they were gonna pass the drug test and treatment and they got caught. You know what I mean? Because our brain tells us that we're hot stuff and we could just get away with it, anything, right? So anyways, I'm going on way too long. I thought this video was only gonna be 10 minutes, but like, I hope the best for Chris. And Chris, if you ever see this when you get out, like feel free to reach out. And all of you out there, feel free to reach out to me if you need to talk or if you have a loved one, right? Like I'm not a therapist or a psychologist. I am somebody who has not only stayed clean, but I worked in treatment doing kind of like peer support and sharing my experience. And a lot of the experience I share is based on not only my own, but what I've seen happen to others, all right? But the last thing is, even if you're not in recovery, keep your eye on the prize, all right? And for us, for people like me, that prize is staying clean. For you, it might be overcoming your depression, overcoming your anxiety, whatever it is. All the other stuff is trivial nonsense. And if that can lead you back to that dark place where you don't wanna be, then stay away from it. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at therewiredsoul.com and buying different merch like this shirt with my adorable kitty Maya on it. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.